But in the summer of 2005, it's what happens at night that sets the community on fire. It's 3.30 a.m., and a college student is relaxing in the heat. He's alone, but not for long. Hey, brother. Come on over here, man. This is your song. Here you go, man. Buy yourself a sandwich. They said, well, we found him dead. And I just... Um, I, I, I fell to my knees, hysterical, screaming, crying, please, dear God, make this be a bad dream. He was just shot once in the lung, and David suffocated instantly. Just that was such relief that he had gone fast and hadn't suffered. The same weapon was used to fire those shell casings. The randomness and brutality of the attacks offer investigators an insight into the minds of those responsible. After each of these shootings, whether it was a dog, a horse, or a person, the feeling they would have had was the same as the feeling that a teenage boy has on Halloween. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel here. It's Lavender here, and today I am doing the case, a true crime case. And the true crime case I'm doing today is the true crime case, serial murder shooters of Phoenix, Arizona, Dale Hazener and Samuel Deanman. So this is just basically the serial shooters who murdered people in Phoenix, Arizona case. I haven't really seen a bunch of videos done in this case, and I was watching a documentary like a long, long time ago, and I remember this case, and so I want to do a video on this case because I found it really interesting. So let's get started into this true crime case. So here we go. And also, happy 2021, everyone. So this case has been featured in a number of media and TV. This this uh, case has been featured um, on news channels and on um, some documentaries. One of the documentaries is on YouTube. I think of, it's of... Uh, the brother of Dale who did documentary and it was on LMN. Just look up uh, Dale Hasner, the person who did this crime, and it should come up. So let's get started. The background story, personal lives of the murderers. Dale worked as a custodian at the Sky Harbor International Airport in Phoenix, Arizona at the time of his arrest and also was a boxing photographer. In 1994, he and his wife Karen lost two sons when they drowned in a creek during a car accident. They eventually divorced and separated. Dale began joyriding and drinking with his brother Jeff, and during the early 2006, he was introduced to Samuel by him at a bar in a nearby Glendale. Samuel was the father of two girls, and in 2001, his wife divorced him, and his family claimed that he had become a drug addict. He would shoplift alcohol and CDs and do petty crimes. Now onto the actual like, background, as in like the crime spree and the shootings and the murders. So here we go. The serial shooters attacked from a car without warning. That was their MO. They would not give a warning. They were driving a car. It's kind of like the DC sniper shootings, honestly. Just the Arizona version, I guess. The offenders targeted victims who walked on sidewalks or were out alone, usually between the times of 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. in the morning. Victims that they would, um, you know, shoot. They were just opportunistic random targets. There was no, like, like, vendetta or anything. It was just random people that they targeted. Before they targeted people, they would also target animals, like horses and dogs and farm animals. They started out shooting animals in mid-2005. The shootings occurred in Phoenix, Arizona between May 2005 and August 2006. They shot and killed 20-year-old Claudia Guerreras Cruz in nearby Scottsdale, Arizona. Robin Blank said 22 was shot and killed at 11.15 p.m. while walking from her parents' house to her boyfriend's house. And on August 3rd, Phoenix police released a statement linking her murder to the serial shooter at large in the area, citing forensic evidence and similarities to the crime spree in the shooter's past crimes. Before the murders, again, they shot pedestrians, cyclists, and dogs and horses. That also linked them. That's also the um, uh, similarities, too. 
Phoenix police originally thought that the serial shooter was only one person, a single individual, but that later would become not true. One of the victims from this case, most famously, is really Paul Patrick. Paul wanted a pack of cigarettes, so he decided to go out on that hot evening at 11.30 p.m. June 8, 2006. The 45-year-old Army veteran who worked as a supermarket stalker ventured outside. He didn't get far, and he didn't hear the shotgun blast as it slammed into his lower body and into his stomach area and intestines. He stood for a moment trying to hold his intestines in so in his hands so they keep them to keep them from falling out of his body. When he looked up, he saw a Hispanic man walking and standing over him, holding a pistol. He expected who he thought was the gunman to finish him off, and the guy said, No one's going to hurt you, the man said. The man was Sayo Guerrero, a Army National Guard veteran. Guerrero ran inside to his apartment and got his gun and simple first aid kit. He identified himself to Patrick and let him know that he was an Army veteran. He wasn't there to hurt him and used what he could from his first aid kit. He held Patrick, Patrick's guts in and helped him stop the bleeding until the ambulance and the police showed up. The police took Guerrero's gun from him until they were sure he was not the threat or whoever or who did this. Patrick lived to testify against Dateman and Hauser later on. However, Patrick later succumbed and died of his injuries. 12 years after the shootings and the murder spree. Here are some, but not all, of the other victims involved in this case. Tommy Mendez, 39. Reina, Re, Ronald Remelo, 56. David Estrada, 20. Nathal, Nathal Schofender. Barbara Whitner survived. Jose Ortiz, 44. Marco Corlello, 28. Timmy Tori shot in the neck, survived. Clarissa Rowley, 21, survived. Kibbley Timunu, shot in the back by Ho by Dale, survived. Timothy Davenport, stabbed in the back and slashed in the face by Dateman, survived. James Hodge, survived. Miguel Rodriguez, shot in the side, survived. Daryl Davies, shot in the left side, survived. The duo continued the random shootings until the end of July when Dateman made the mistake of bragging about the crimes and the shootings to a drinking buddy he drank alcohol with, and that guy later reported him to the police. They were both eventually arrested on August 3rd to 6th and tried. Dale Alton received six death penalty sentences. Jeff Hausner was also indicted and was in 2009 and sentenced to a total of 25 years in prison for un unspecified stabbings that were committed during this t his time with his brother and um, Samuel. Samuel is currently serving a life sentence without parole and on June 19, 2013, updated, Dale was found unresponsive in his prison cell and later taken to the hospital where he died. His death was later determined to be a suicide caused by an overdose of antidepressants that he had hoarded for over two months straight from an inmate who was distributing them. So if you guys like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Bye guys. See you next video.